Hello everyone, this is Natas level 11 to level 12. Uh, we have this web page that has a JPEG upload function um, and the ability to view the source code of the page. So before we test this functionality, I'm going to view the source code to see sort of what we're looking at here. And I'm going to start by scanning my eyes through the code to see if there's any mention of printing the password. Um, so we can start there. I mean, we could use the find or search functionality of the browser, but with a small amount of code, I just do it manually. And I can see that there's not any mention of printing the password, which makes me think that we might not get the password directly from the web page this time. Um, and if that's the case, then we need to somehow retrieve the password from the Etsy NATAS web pass NATAS 13 password file. Uh, and so this is where we might, well, this is where we will use the upload file functionality. One thing we can do when we can upload files, one potential sort of attack vector is, is there any way that we can upload a script or some code that will get executed server side. If there is, if we can do that, maybe we can execute some code that's going to get that password for us um, and send it to us. And so now we need to kind of look at this upload file feature and see if we can spot any ways of, of doing that. So I'm just going to create a just a simple text file. Just call it test.txt. And I'm going to upload that. Even though it wants me to upload a JPEG, I'm just going to see what happens. Oh, whoops. See what happens when I upload a simple piece of text. So it gives us this upload with a random string.jpg, um, which we can click. And it seems to take us to what could potentially be that text file that we just uploaded, although it's interpreting it as a JPEG, which obviously it's not. And so there's uh, an error here. But if by any chance this is just the text file renamed as a JPEG, then maybe we can find a way to rename this as a .php file instead. And the reason I say that is because if we're able to request, if this literally just takes our file and moves it to an upload folder and gives us a path to request it, then if we, if we were able to upload a PHP file, we could request the PHP file by going to the link it sends and then on the server side, it will use the PHP binary to process the PHP code before sending the results of that to us. That's just how serving a PHP file works. And so if that's the case, we can add some code, some PHP code that will retrieve the password server side and then send us that when we get served the file. So that, that's like immediately how it looks to me, because we know it's using PHP. Um, so in the source, I'm going to see how it gets this .jpg, because we would love it to be a .php. So let's see where that .jpg is being attached. And the first kind of place we can look is the, is the actual file name input that we've got down here. And you can see that it takes there's some PHP get random string um, function being called. But what's really curious is this .jpg that's being added here. So if we look back and we inspect, looking in the body, and looking at this form, you can see that there's a random string here with a .jpg being attached. And what's interesting about this 
is that this is the file name this is a file name that we're providing to the server um, it didn't look like the same because this is like a random string here OYC when we upload it doesn't have this OYC but what's interesting is that it it has this .jpg um, yeah that it has this .jpg being added here what you would normally expect to see is the .jpg being added on the server um, and so without even having to look at this all this code we could check to see if that's the case if it just uses this .jpg directly or if it adds .jpg again somewhere in this code but I would just be like tempted as a first attempt at changing this on our side because we can in the inspect tools and seeing what happens so here instead of having a .jpg why don't we just have a .text because if it uses the extension that we provide here when it saves the file on the server then we've already found the solution so we can upload the file and it and it seems to just use that extension um, it gives it a new sort of random string name but we can click and yeah it is literally serving us the file that we uploaded so now we think okay if it's not changing it seems like it's not changing the file at all um, and we know that we can we can give it any arbitrary extension now let's try and upload a PHP file and see if we can get PHP to process it so let's make a script dot php and i'm going to have to turn off copilot because i have copilot enabled um, so yeah so what php could we input that would retrieve the password from natas 13 well to include the contents of another file on the server we can use the include or require um, commands so let me just use require and we know the file we're looking for is natas13 and oh sorry i'm just caps locked and save and this uh, ignoring my linting error um, this would literally take the contents of the natas13 password file and replace this with it um, so if we can save this and get this executed by the server so if I now go to this upload functionality and take my script and now here make sure that this is going to take a .php extension in the inspect tools and upload the file well now we have the file being treated as a .php file on the server which means when I click it and just a quick diagram to show when I click it it's going to be processed by PHP before we retrieve before we get sent the contents and so when I click this PHP processes that script which takes the contents of natas13 um, and embeds it as the text and then the server sends us the results so you can see how server side you really need to make sure that no one can do this and just upload a script um, and the .jpg being used directly from the client um, is really really terrible um, server side it should receive the file with its file name and then form the entire file name server side um, to make sure that that doesn't happen but that's how we can sort of exploit that and we didn't even need to look at the rest of the code we kind of just could see what a potential choice could be and played around and 
by doing so, we didn't even need to really pay much attention to what was happening. Um, if that hadn't have worked, we could have then delved deeper into the code. Um, so yeah, that was quite neat. And um, let's go on to the next one.